handoff to Davis. He turns the corner, and once he does that, it's over. Davis. Wow. <laughs> what a player. Wide open, Davison. And the follow for Davis. Just a complete player. He's not near his ceiling yet. Mike Schmitz from ESPN, we're here with Johnny Davis. Uh, Johnny, wh what's kind of led to, you know, you making such a big jump here as a sophomore? Um, I'd probably say, you know, just coming into this year, I knew that, you know, we were going to have a lot of seniors that left. Um, Brad came back, obviously, which is huge for us. You know, we need that experience. But I just kind of figured the team was going to need that guy, you yep. know, to – Kind of be the centerpiece, you know, the leader that makes them go. And, you know, I, I, I think I'm doing a good job with taking on that role. Yeah, I mean, one of the, you know, nation's leading scorers. You guys are winning big games, beating really good teams. So for people watching this who maybe don't know much about your background, you know, who you are, what can you tell us about how you got to this point? Um, all right. Well, I'm, I'm originally from Wisconsin, yep. from across Wisconsin. I got a twin, and then my younger brother and sister are twins, too. So, you know, I mean, we always lived in a competitive household. My dad played in the NBA, and, you know, it's just a goal of mine to play in the NBA like he did, you know, and just have a long, steady career. But the main thing that stood out to me watching you in Vegas was, like, you know, I'd seen you a little bit in the past, but not as up close as there, and, like, you were maybe the best defender on the court. You were talking. You are playing with energy. Have you always been that way? Um, I would say certainly I have, yes. Last year was, like, I don't know, a little bit of like a neutral year for me because, you know, I was, I was coming in as a freshman on a senior-led team. You know, I was, I was doing as much as I can to help win the game, but I wasn't in that, you know, that role yet that I am right now. Um, but, you know, I'm, I, I usually, I just play, I just go out there and play. You know, I'm not thinking about too much. I just go out there and play unconscious and, you know, just do whatever it takes to help the team win. Yeah, and you guys are, are clearly winning. So, all right, we're going to break down some of your film here. we got about five or six minutes of all different aspects of your game. But what I want to focus on first is just defensively. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that's where you've been able to kind of hang your hat. And not just, like, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, but your ball screen, you know, ability to get over the top of screens, your instinctual as a playmaker. And I would, I would call you a defensive playmaker just because of your, your instincts. Um, take me through kind of – because you seem very calm and relaxed right here. You're almost baiting him into this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean a little bit. I I can tell that the way the point guard catches the ball, you know, he's not really he's not really thinking too much about it. He's just trying to swing the ball, get the offense moving, and you know, once he's got his arms in motion like that, and he leaves the pass, I go for it. Definitely, like the instincts, your ability to you know kind of cause havoc defensively. You you can see it. All right, then this play, you know, okay, maybe you want this back, right? The uh, just lost the ball here. Yeah, just I I was getting a little fatigued at this point in the yep. game, but you know, there's no excuses. But, I mean, this is high-level energy. This is a coach's dream, you know what I mean? Like, when you're a rookie in the NBA, if you make plays like this, you'll stay on the floor. So what's going through your head kind of at this point after you turn it over? Um, you know, they got the lead right now, and I figured if he goes out and gets a dunk, the momentum is going to shift their way. Yep. So, you know, I'm just I'm sprinting back all out, and I just timed it up really well. He kind of took off from a little far. I knew he wasn't going to be able to dunk it, so I just sat back and waited on it. And, you know, I made the play. I, it was a little off balance when I jumped, too. I almost fell right there. But, you know, I'm, I'm glad I got back and made that play for our team. Well, a huge play at, at a huge moment there. And then just some of these little, like, sneaky plays, you know. It, it, take me through this one. Um, well, first of all, I didn't want Jay and I to get the ball in transition because, yep. you know, when he gets it, he's going rim to rim. He's, he's pretty hard to stop. So, you know, I just read up on it. I knew Edie was going to try to, you know, want them to get the ball out and get – get an offensive offensive rhythm kind of because you know at this point in the game they're losing Edie you know he's probably a little tired too not thinking at all he's just turning around got the rebound through it I picked it off and Brad I, Brad come down after this if he'd have hit that that three it would have been really big but you know I'm, I'm defensively that's really where I hang my hat because mm -hmm. you can't you can't control whether the ball goes in or not mm -hmm. not uh, not all the time but defensively you can always control you know your intensity your effort stuff like that yeah, no question. And like I said, that was the main thing that stood out to me about you. And this is, I know I mentioned his name, but this is Jalen Suggs would do this like five times a game, mm -hmm. get steals like this. Yeah. Yeah. Have you watched much of him? Uh, I, I played against him two, twice, twice in high school. So I'm aware of, you know, his pickpocket tendencies. I, I kind of picked this up from him a little bit too. 
just well, the way he anticipates anticipates the ball. Yeah, and, and just similar with the with the motor, the energy for sure that that you guys play with. And then I love this this play. I mean, so let's see. Should you? I mean, jump to the pass, right? Should I, be at the midline early. Yep, I should have been at the midline by now. But okay, what's what's going through your head? I see Chucky get beat a little bit. I knew I wasn't gonna get there in time, but I knew he wasn't gonna shoot it. Also, either he's got two people on him, and I left my man wide open in the corner. I knew the only way he was gonna be able to throw it was over me because I was in his passing lane. So you know, I just used my quick jumping ability and tipped it so that prevented them from getting either an open three or mm -hmm. just one more is all the way around. Off the ball, you know, showing the the instincts, the quickness, and then okay, on the ball, right? You contain penetration, uh, but you're really good at like digging at the ball when you're one pass away, right? I mean, you get a lot of steals. I don't know, does he just lose it? No, no, I, t I tipped it. I, he's kind of a smaller guard, but I think I'm just really good at using my length. Mm -hmm. You know, people have been telling me for the longest time I have long arms and I got to use them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just see him, he's trying to hit that crack back play to Kyler Edwards, who's a really good shooter. And, you know, he's kind of, when he has his back turned to me, you know, the little guard, he's not going to post me up. He's not in a scoring position. Mm -hmm. So I just jumped the passing lane, tipped it, and dove on the floor. Yeah, and those are the energizing plays, like those, I said. Those are the those are the winning plays right there, the key moments. 50-50 balls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you definitely have that in, in your DNA. All right, so some of the one-on-one -on -one stuff. Those are like the, you know, you're making plays, you're flying around, you're, you're being an athlete. Um, but these one-on-one -on -one situations, so this is what, Michael DeVoe? Yes. Um, what, what was this matchup like? Because I, I watched it, right? And it's almost like, so he's a lefty, mm. but you were almost like forced sending him left, but then you had a lot of success doing that. Like, what are you trying to take away with him? He likes to do a lot of shake and bake stuff, so I mm -hmm. kind of just wanted to force him to go one way. Mm -hmm. um, T-Wall did a good job of getting the help so he didn't attack my top foot. But, um, you know, I noticed that he, he didn't really want to, you know, try to blow by me at all. He mm -hmm. wanted to settle for that three. So I let him get by me, and then I just chested him up, used my physicality, and made him shoot a tough shot over me. Another 50-50 ball, right? Mm-hmm. Is that being a, a son of an NBA player, is that, like, did, did, did that have an impact on the way you play? Or? Um, honestly, I'm going to say the reason why I, I, like, take the defensive side a little bit more serious than offensive side is because of my, my coach when I was in elementary school. His name was Shannon Austin. Okay. Remember, there was one practice. You know what shell drill is, obviously. Yeah. yeah. There was one practice. He made that. He made us do that. I kid you not, for literally over an hour. Okay. He wanted us to be that good defensively, and you know he, him and my dad have just always been on me about playing defense because, like I said, you can always control how hard and how intense you play on defense, and you know if, the, if your shot's not going in, you go down, you get a stop on defense, then you know it's it's neutral. Yeah. You know? But. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I kind of just love playing defense, too, just getting after people and frustrating them because I know that if I was on offense and somebody was guarding me like that, I'd be pissed. And, then, you know, sometimes it kind of just takes you out of the game a little bit, yeah. too. Yeah, so they're, you know, using your strength, kind of walling up. Like, even if he does get a piece of the paint, you're, you're a tough guy to, to finish through, right? Mm -hmm. uh, similar situation here? You know, I, I kind of I figured I was a little bit bigger than him, so I kind of just used that advantage and – you know, it's really all just about chesting him up. Once he gets down low, there you can't, mm -hmm. you know, you can't let him bury himself into you. And you know, it's about it's about staying center with him too. Because if I get one way or the other too much, then he can pivot and mm -hmm. get me on his backside. So I, you know, I was just trying to focus on staying in front of him and making him shoot a tough shot over me. Yeah, you do a really good job of containing the ball, like in general. You know, you see a lot of defenders who just get beat and then make a play at the rim, but mm -hmm. you actually like, contain penetration pretty yeah. well. Uh, and here's another one um, against what Tajay Moore. Yes. Uh, not a great ball handler, but still, I mean, that's picture perfect. Uh, take me through this one. Oh, it was kind of a slip out screen. Yeah. Um, you know, he came down. I got in front of him. I uh, didn't really have anywhere to pass it. What was the shot clock at? 15? Oh, yeah. it wasn't that low. Um, I honestly didn't even really expect him to shoot it, but, you know, he kind of just turned around and shot it right in my face while <laughs> yeah. I was there. So uh, take it. Take it, yep. Might as well. All right, so Ivy, a little bit of, and I, this wasn't all one-on-one -on -one stuff, you know, like we'll get into some of the other kind of actions, uh, but what is your goal in, in transition when you see him come with his team? Goal in transition is not not to press up on him. Uh -huh. uh, no, it's to, it's to not really back up either, but, you know, it's once he gets to that point where he's coming downhill and he's really starting to drive, then I got to get into him and use my chest a little bit mm -hmm. and make him shoot a tough shot like that. T-Wall did a good job of coming over and helping too. You guys did a really good job on him, you specifically as well. 
Uh, so a couple plays, some good, some bad, right? Um, yeah, Close out yeah. situations. What's I guess what are his tendencies? What are you looking at? What's your goal here? You know, I kind of closed out uh, with my hands on. I didn't want him throwing into the post to Trayvon either because, um, you know, him and Edie, mm-hmm. you know, they did a pretty good job last night. But, you know, like I said, he's just so damn fast. You know, once he gets downhill, it's kind of hard to stop him. Yeah, no, he, he's quick. He's explosive. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, okay, they're kind of trying to set the ball screen here, but don't allow it, and then just kind of chest him up again, right? Yeah, and then... Ben then box out and got me hey, dunked on. Got you dunked on. <laughs> did, did you say anything to him there? No. Uh, well, to Ben. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I, I really, I kind of forgot about this play because, you know, when you're getting dunked on by a 7'5 guy, yeah. you, you really don't feel too bad about it. Um, so this is where I think you're really good. Okay, we talked about you containing penetration, being able to square up the ball, all that. Uh, but you're really good at denying, you know, like dribble handoffs and, and all that. Uh, was that an emphasis for you guys, just like no easy catches here? Mm-hmm. Well, because I, I knew if, if Jaden got the ball um, coming off that dribble handoff and he was going to his right hand, he was going to get downhill and he was going to score. Mm-hmm. So I just did my best job of jumping in front of him and preventing him from getting the ball. Yeah, really good possession there. Had, had a lot of good possessions, you know, exactly like that. And you guys as a whole, you know, flying around. And then, all right, the last piece of it, if you do switch, you got to fight, right? How, yes. how you feel in these situations against bigs? Um, you know, I, I feel pretty confident because, I mean, I'm not the smallest guy. I'm also not the biggest guy. But, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like just, you know, getting lower than the big man is and digging into their uh, hips and knees doesn't really allow them to, you know, get that position that they need to either get get a catch in the post or right here him trying to get an offensive rebound. Mm-hmm. You know, you just got to get lower than them. Use your lower body strength when you're going against guys like that because obviously he's way stronger than I am. But, you know, it's just about playing smarter, not harder. So, all right, that's defense. You play your ass off. You're tough, competitive, coach's dream in in that regard. Um, Offensively, it's almost like you work your way out, right? You're really good in the post, mid-range, and then you kind of work your way out. Have you always been, like, so advanced in the post? Yes, um, I was I was one of the bigger guys on our high school team, so our, our, my coaches made me post up a lot. Um, you no, know, it's just you know it's just all about being patient when you're in the post. Cause right here, I noticed that they're not coming to double, so I got mm-hmm. a one on one opportunity. Um, he's pressing up on me. I got the base on wide open. I just spin, and he follows me. I get to the line. And that's just a feel thing, right? You mm-hmm. feel him leaning. Yep. No double, no dig, and and then you're going to work. Uh, so, all right, we, so we see the quick spin. We've seen you just sheer physicality, like, you know, mow guys over. But I want to highlight some, some of the skill, too. Uh, I mean, the back shoulder fade, that's that's an NBA move right there. It's, it's a very tough shot, but I noticed that they have one of their smaller guards on me, and he wasn't really going to be able to affect my shot if I was fading away like that. Who do you like to watch? A- anyone you took some of this stuff from, post-wise? Mid- DeMar DeRozan. Yeah. I love watching him in his yeah. Green's game. That's probably who I'd say I, I'd take most of that stuff after. And he's been amazing. Yes, yeah. he has been killing this year. Finally getting kind of his due, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, mid-post, mid-range, stepping out even a little bit more now. All right, so we saw the back shoulder, and then there the left shoulder, right? Mm-hmm. I yeah. noticed that I had a smaller defender on me again. So this is one of my favorite clips in, in, in terms of just the posts in general. So first of all, this the cut is... High level. Uh, so that, I mean, what are the keys to this? <coughs> like you're just kind of slow and relaxed and then boom? Yeah, it's, it's all about change of pace, you know, just lull him to sleep, make him think I'm going one way and you know, juke him out and get to the other. I might have hooked him a little bit right there. But, you know, I noticed that he that had a bigger defender on me and then um, Igadaro is just waiting in the lane. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I take my time. Find low, cross, cross the court, yeah. bang. But the spin, the vision, all that, big time. Sorry, you mentioned the mid-range. You've always been a guy who lives in the mid-range? Yes. I, I've been living in that mid-range since my earliest days. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so was that a DeMar influence, or that was just, you know, getting shots up in the driveway? That was, like, who was kind of your influence there? Um, no, nah, that, that's just all me. I, when I was younger, I wasn't really the greatest three-point shooter, mm-hmm. so... And normally, you know, when I was younger, when I would shoot the mid-range, I really wouldn't even, like, I wouldn't even shoot step-back shots like this. I would just get right around in the paint and shoot with one hand. Mm. So I figured, you know, I'd just do the same thing from farther, but actually shoot a jump shot. And, you know, I think I just do a really good job of, 
you know, use my leaping ability and elevating over defenders to be able to knock down shots like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an NBA move. And then getting into his body too, you know, I think you have one. Yeah, create separation. Yeah, you use your strength really well, shoot over the top, smaller guards. Then you had this one too. I mean, this is pretty advanced. Uh, what do you remember about this? Um, you know, I see him, he's got his hips completely turned and he's almost like running that way. And, you know, they got Edie in the lane, so I didn't really want to take it all the way in there. So I mm -hmm. didn't really, you know, stop quick quick between the legs. Yep, easy. And was able to get the shot up over him. And your balance, too. Like, you have low center of gravity. You can really change directions, you know, defensively, offensively. All right, so kind of playing out of pick and roll, out of handoffs. I think as of late, you've been really good at, okay, let's run him into the screen, right? A little setup. And then what? what's your first read? You're, you're looking at if he goes under? He, he had been going under screens, I think, for the majority of the game. Mm -hmm. And I figured, you know, eventually I got to be able to knock down a three. But, you know, he, I had him way, way below the screen. And, you know, CB did a nice job of rolling and getting his way a little bit to buy me a little bit of extra time to be able to set my feet and knock down that shot. And then here again, coming off. So now when they got to go over, that's where you're most comfortable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I was driving. I knew Morton had all of his momentum going on hill trying to stop me. So. Yeah. I just stopped really quick and you know kind of leaned back into my shot so I'm not shooting shooting it like directly over him mm -hmm. uh, it created a little bit of separation and a lot of bigs a lot of NBA teams as much as they talk about switching like they're still playing out of drops you know they mm -hmm. want to force mid-range pull up so if you can be a Chris Paul Devin Booker CJ McCollum like DeMar really kill in those areas mm -hmm. you can score a lot of points yes sir. <laughs> all right and then kind of winding down here you're passing uh, you know you mentioned you didn't play a lot of pick around. how did you guys play like it was it was four out, one in, yeah. uh, you know, set curl screens, um, and then whenever you get the ball on the wing, just make a play. Yeah, make That's a play. That, that was basically it. Go get a bucket. Mm -hmm. So this is really kind of the first, one of the first times that you've been asked to, like, make a lot of decisions in pick and roll? Yes. And here, I mean, I thought this was one of your better reads. What are you looking at in the defense when you make this pass? Oh, I see that Zed Key, you know, he's coming up pretty hard to try and stop the ball. And CB did a really good job of noticing that and rolling. Just a little touch pass over the top to the big seven-footer and let him go get it and finish. Yeah. And it's, it's always good to get your bigs the ball as close to the rim as possible because then you know, that's where, you know, their shots are the easiest because all you have to do is just go right up over Zed Key. Who's, he's got a couple of inches on and just mm -hmm. make the layup. Yeah, really, really nice pass there. This was maybe one of your better passes of the season, right? Oh, yeah, I love this one. Yeah, so what's going through your head here? So you come off, goes under. Came back off of it. He went over this time, so that forces the big guy to help. Mm -hmm. He's anticipating that Steven's going to stay out on the three-point line because, you know, he's already shot in a couple already in the game. He's hit some big shots for us this year from three. And, you know, Edie's big, bigger guy, so that means he's a little bit slower. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you got to put just enough touch on it so Steven catches it and he doesn't have to dribble at all. You can just catch it and put it up right away. Um, big time pass. All right, last one. So, obviously, you know, we've seen you with the ball, doing all, you know, playing in the mid post, all that. But I think right away you can fit with anybody because you can play off the catch, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, have you always played with other good guards? Yes, I, I've been playing with my brother my whole life. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you're used to this. Yes. I, but it seems like even your catch-and-shoot stroke has, like, your confidence has even taken another step. Yes. I, I think I gained that from when I was playing um, during Texas for the USA tryouts and over in Latvia because I had never shot the ball better in my life. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why I made the team was because of my three-point shooting. And, you know, I think that's just something I carried over in, into playing for Wisconsin. Yeah, and, and shooting it with a, a lot of confidence. Even maybe early in the year, sometimes like you turn down, you know, those auto turn downs where like yeah. you're not, you don't even notice they're closing out short, and mm -hmm. you just go. Yeah. Uh, but now it seems like you're settling in, and I like this action too. Yeah, it's just a little peek. I see him go try to go under the screen or over the screen to beat me to my spot in the post. You know, jump back. Easy money. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's kind of the 360 view of, of your game. Maybe a year ago, not everyone knew who you were, you know, and that, is, is it weird? Like, do you try to block all that out or are you? Most of the time, I don't even think about it. Yeah. You know, I kind of just, I kind of just think, you know, I'm just the same guy, you know, same guy as last year. I'm just, just playing a little bit better. That's all. Yeah. Just going for 37 and 14. <laughs> every once in a while. Well, Johnny, I appreciate you taking the time, man. You know, you know best of luck.
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.